Welcome to another episode of the Everyday Expertise Podcast. I'm your host, Roland Martin, and I hope that today's conversation will expand your knowledge. Today, I welcome Rose Martin to the show. Rose is my aunt, and for as long as I can remember, I've really enjoyed eating the food that she prepares, whether it's going over to her house for a meal or picking out her dish at a family gathering or potluck. I've known for a long time that she really enjoys preparing food and sees it as an art form, but it was good to sit down with her, hear the stories of how she got her love for food, how she's learned um, how to prepare new dishes and how she's um, gained her skills over the years. And also in this conversation, she talks about her blog and how she uses that to share her recipes and her expertise with others to encourage them to to get better at cooking and um, to get into preparing food if that's something that that they don't enjoy. So I hope that you'll enjoy this conversation and learn from her expertise. Welcome, Rose, to the Everyday Expertise podcast. I'm really excited to have you here and talk with you this morning. I'm excited to be here. Excellent. A little nervous as well. Well, that's fine, yeah. <laughs> um, I was uh, thinking about uh, the topic that we have here and I'm um, talking about food. And I was looking at your, um, somewhere on your blog, you said you were talking about the, the conversation that can come around a table. Um, and, and I was thinking back to the wonderful conversations that I've had with my family um, around the supper table as we eat and then sometimes we'll stay there a long time after the, the meal's over or discussing something or telling stories from our day or something like that. And um, I also was thinking back to the, the many times that I had the privilege of joining your family, especially it's been a, not as much over the last uh, number of years, but um, I remember spending a couple weeks one time at, uh, at your place while my family was gone. And um, yeah, just had some wonderful uh, meals and conversation around your table as well. So I'm excited about having the chance to talk with you here today. I still think of having you there sometimes when we have a box of cereal that's nearly empty. <laughs> yeah, I kind of somehow... Because you would always, I could count on you to finish the little bits that were left in cereal boxes. Yeah, you guys always had a, a, a nice variety of cereals. And um, one time I... No, it happened a few times, I think, that yeah. I... I remember one time entering two in one yes, into one bowl. Yeah, it just that happened that the ones I grabbed were uh, were at the right that, at the end. That was, was great. Yeah. <laughs> two gone, just like that. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I've kind of I've gotten that reputation at home too. Joy always hands me the box when it's down to the very end because she knows I don't mind the the, the crumbs and dust, the dust at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So tell me a little bit. What are some of the things that keep you busy currently? Well. As you know, Steve is retired, so that has changed our life, I would say, quite a bit this summer. Yeah. Um, in some ways, my own life hasn't changed. I'm still preserving and cleaning and stuff like mm -hmm. that. This, yesterday, my daughter Tamara came, and we did a, a whole ton of pumpkin that we preserved okay. for canning and freezing. Oh, wow. Very nice. For both of us. Mm -hmm. And um, so there's that, and I've been getting back into the house cleaning again. Now that summer is getting cooler. Right, yeah. Fall is in. Yeah. Um, we are more free to come and go as we want to. So we just came back from a cottage weekend in mm. Perth, mm -hmm. close to Kingston, Very good. with some of my family members. So that was fun. Yeah. So you're enjoying that. Uh, yeah. That yeah. I am. I especially. Yeah, or, yeah. I especially the, enjoy the aspect of just being able to pick up and go. You know, deciding the night before oh, or yeah. that morning that you know what today is fairly free. Let's do this. That, yeah, that so would that, be that very part different. Is, that part is different, and I like it. Yeah, because yeah, in order for us to go on a trip, we'd like yeah. have to plan at plan least ahead. months yeah. and um, yeah. in advance, if not years. And so yeah. that would be yeah. very freeing. Yeah, that's great. I'm a spontaneous sort of person, so that fits right into my okay, yeah, <laughs> my life model. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very good. Yeah, so you you mentioned uh, you do some preserving and things like that. Is there um, other food related things that you do on a regular basis or what are what are the some of the things that you're um, involved in there most of my food related things are pertaining to family these days i would mm -hmm. say um, my daughter, Trisha lives in Windsor. So when they come out, it's for a weekend. And right. I always look forward to that because I can make meals that involve more people, which is, which is fun. There are yeah. certain dishes that you make that work better for larger groups. Right. Yeah. 
or you might have leftovers that you're not going to be eating for the next week, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I like that part of it. I, I love entertaining for family and friends, mm -hmm. but I prefer to do it in kind of manageable swatches okay. of people. You know, I don't know, up to 12 is sort of my ideal size of okay. a group yep. rather than 30. Right, yeah. But yeah, I like it still. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, other yeah. other than that, I guess, well, I I love to bake bread. Always have. It's probably my favorite thing to bake. Okay. And so I put the word out to some of, or both sides of the family, actually, that I would bake bread for anybody who wants to at any oh, time. Nice. They just let me know and I bake bread. So okay. That's yeah. been fun. Just very sporadic, but... I like it. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Do you do a, a number of different kinds of bread? I or? do. Yeah, I yeah. I um tell them what I'm willing to do that week, and then they decide which one they want or which two oh, okay. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Yeah. What are uh, what are your what's your favorite kind of bread to to make or to eat? I don't have a favorite. I'm, oh, okay. I love playing around with sourdough just because it's it's like the holy grail of bread making. Okay. Um, because of the intricacies of it, and it's it's an art. It's very much okay. an art. Bread making yeah. is an art in itself, but sourdough especially is an art and i love that aspect of it so. is it more difficult than some types um or what uh, it's more susceptible to it's to variances in climate and oh, okay. the starter uh, the activity of the starter and stuff it's, it's like a whole other language okay yeah so, so yeah. it's there is more involved yeah. in, in doing so I, it. yeah yeah it just it just feels good to have master i don't see it <laughs> shouldn't say i've mastered it but at least have a good handle on it yeah but. And you've noticed an improvement since oh, yes. you started doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that is exciting. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, and maybe uh, just here, we'll, we'll probably talk about it a little bit more, but just uh, uh, tell me a little bit with uh, how often do you do a blog or um, what, does, what does that take? My goal is two blogs a month. Okay. It does yeah. not always happen. Sometimes in the busy times, it's one blog a month. But okay. that, that's yep. my goal. Yeah, two a month. So that includes, or that yeah, that includes writing then as as part of the, yeah. that mm -hmm. process. Yeah. yeah, and I try to work ahead, but so far I'm not very successful. Okay. I might yeah. I might be worked one blog ahead, but not more than that yeah. actually. Oh, very good. So yeah, um, what uh, do you have any other hobbies or interests that um, that you enjoy that you would like to share? Well, I'm trying to get back into reading more regularly again. I decided about two years ago or so that I need to read more again. I had been, I don't know, watching things and playing online games and stuff in my spare time mm. more. I decided I want to get back into reading. Okay. Yeah. So I joined a book club that I'm part of and that nice. has been a lot of fun and that has been kept me on track with at least one book a month. Right, yeah. We, we do a monthly book. Um, I still love to play Dominion Online. Okay, nice. Yeah. Um, and more and more again as we're aging i guess and our friends are all aging we tend to get together with a group of friends on a friday or saturday night and just play board games okay or whatever, which has been fun too yeah that's or, great or family sometimes yeah. do you uh do you play board games just with steve or do you usually uh, a do few it? there a lot of board games aren't really conducive to two players yeah. but there's a few that are and yeah we do that too okay mostly when it's just steve and i we play scrabble okay nice but we also play a few others yeah yeah very good yeah. no that's great um yeah and i'm uh interested in in kind of learning I, i've known that you um have always enjoyed cooking enjoyed um preparing food but i'm uh i'm curious to know kind of if if you can pick out where that came from or or um how that developed um or maybe it's something i don't know if it's something that you've um just it's always been the case but uh yeah where did can you do you do you know where that interest came from i'm not sure i've been asked that question often uh i've been interested in cooking as long as i can remember i don't remember okay. a time that i didn't enjoy cooking yep. or was was interested in in the process in fact as a child i would i would trade um cooking for other chores oh. like cleaning or gardening sometimes or like with your sisters. with my siblings yeah, yeah. yeah. so I had a sister, for instance, who still loves cleaning, who would way rather have cleaned than cooked. Okay. Yep. And so I'd say, well, I'll do your cooking. We we had a bit of a schedule, but I'd okay. say I'll swap my my cleaning for your cooking cook for your cooking. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you want to, and it usually usually worked. Yeah. <laughs> and Very nice. So, yeah. and my grandma, who lived beside us, that would have been my dad's mom. She was always trying out new dishes with 
whatever she grew or she was a real woods person she was a very very oh, okay. much a naturalist so she would walk with us into the bush and she knew which plants were edible and which ones I weren't see. and wow. so she'd harvest them and take yeah. them home and i'd watch that so maybe that was part of it i don't know right yeah did you yeah. learn also some of the some of the plants like oh in yeah the woods and yeah things like i that? would yeah. say steve would say that my wood lore is fairly intensive be and i'm i accredit it to her okay that's, yeah. do you do any cooking with some with well like the wild ra wild leeks and stuff like that like okay yeah. and things that brings back memories of my childhood but not a lot okay yeah, yeah. very good but a lot of that stuff like the may apples for instance which a lot of people don't know about the apples that develop after the blossoms are edible so we would just walk through the bush and eat them right okay sorry they're they're called may apples they bloom a white blossom in the spring this is like a wild mm -hmm. thing i'm okay. sure we probably have them down here close to the to the marsh i've seen them okay yeah and so you can they have a blo white blossom and then that turns into this kind of soft green apple okay like quite soft like yeah i'm trying to think what texture to do to compare it to i can't really think anyway you can eat that I later see. on and she you know mushrooms which okay. mushrooms were edible which ones weren't yeah things very like good that. yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's interesting i didn't know that about you so <laughs> that's, that's great yeah. so um it kind of developed as a child. This is what yes, you were talking about Yes, I would say here. so. Yeah. Um, my first real job after hiring out as a maid, which is what everybody, every men and, good Mennonite girl did back then, yep. was as a baker at the Stonecrock Bakery. Okay. And I worked there for three years. And obviously my favorite thing to bake there and was and still is bread. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I left the crock when the, the bread making process became more automated because okay. I like the total bread making experience gotcha so, so it um it was something that that machines could do a lot of that process or well what like happened the weighing the weighing and oh, the cutting I and the see. dividing and yeah. eventually even the shaping was done by the machines okay which yeah. for me that's a big part of bread making is the shaping of it i guess that's where the artistry comes in as right well. yeah i didn't mind mixing it in a mixer because we did huge batches but the actual shaping of it and and weighing and all of that, trying to see how close we could get to one pound, you know, and then okay. pop it on, weight on a scale instead of just tossing it into a machine and it right. divides it. Right? Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Which, so it was a lot more practical for them, but it took the enjoyment out of it for me. Yeah. So, so would you have been able to keep working there? Or was, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you chose that because I chose, of that. Yeah. That... I was like, this is the time I'm done now. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Did you do uh, any more jobs within them? Um like preparing food or anything like that or well yeah about mm, i'm not sure how long 10 10 years ago i guess close to that now i worked at for um marion's country cupboard oh okay for four years okay and again my key role there was making the bread and rolls okay with some other things added as needed very good yeah so the um yeah was there anything else like throughout that that so working at the bakery um is there anything else that you can pick out that that was key in in building your either your skills or your love for for food preparation or is it something you've worked on kind of on your own since then i don't know it's it's just there so it follows me wherever i go that's true I just, yeah. I just notice notice it everywhere yeah yeah very good and when you notice you learn um one thing i would say is that i have always read cookbooks like novels front to back really word, word for word okay. cover to cover yeah i will take them into the tub with me and that's my book for the evening you gotcha know? <laughs> yeah that sort of thing so i chose cookbooks that had t tended to have information in them and had pictures pictures were important to me yeah still are um and so i would read them and learn and then the other thing is eating in restaurants for me is an experience. It's not yeah. something I do because I'm hungry. It has to be an experience. Okay. Yep. Um, my philosophy has always been regarding restaurants, why I go somewhere where I can eat what I can make at home mm -hmm. and probably make it better. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Then the restaurant yep. will. Yeah. So I will usually order a dish that I have not had. Okay. Yep. Or that I want to learn about. And then I will go home and try to replicate it. Ah, very so good. I'll either research or I can maybe pinpoint within the dish as I'm eating it what some of the things they've used or done. Yeah. And so I'll try to replicate it. So that's been a part of my life for most of my life. That Yeah, that's, that's really cool because um, <laughs> I was talking with Ricky about ways to develop skills for a graphic designer. 
And one of the things that he said is that to practice, what you should do is find a, a poster or an album cover, something that you really like, and try to replicate mm -hmm. it. That's a really a great way to, to practice, to yeah. learn new things. So that just yeah. that fascinated me when you talked about doing that with, yeah, with dishes. That. Well, what yeah. a lot of people don't realize is that making food is an art. Yeah. It, it's a yeah. form of art. And it's, it's varying degrees of art, depending on how involved you are in it or how much you yeah, put into it, sense. right, obviously. Yeah. The other thing that was formative, I would say, was <clears throat> when my fam family owned a gift shop in St. Jacobs. Okay. Um, back when I was in my te late teens and early 20s, we would always go to a gift show in Toronto once a year okay. to, fi to find new vendors or yep. Uh, yep. and um, new products. And the highlight of that day was always going to a fancy restaurant on the way home. My okay. dad enjoyed them as much as I did, and he had a real nose for sniffing out good places. So okay. we would always hit a different place, and it was almost always a really good experience. And so I think I would attribute my love of really good restaurants mm -hmm. to my dad. And that experience, it was probably my first exposure to really good restaurants, Okay, I would yeah. say. And in more recent years, some great chefs have become our friends. So I've okay. le learned more from them. Yeah, yeah that's fascinating. Do you, um, <laughs> will you, if you're in a restaurant, will you ever ask to talk to the chef and like question them about a dish? Yeah, sometimes. Or if I know the chef especially, but sometimes yeah. I will just ask the waitress. I will say, what's the, what's the herb or what's the spice that oh, I'm tasting yeah. here, you know? Mm -hmm. Or what kind of, what kind of. Uh, vegetable is this if mm -hmm. I can't quite pinpoint it you know, oh, yeah. what what vegetable is this particular one in the assortment or, okay yep. yeah 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 um, like that do they are they usually free to to share or do usually, they usually okay of, often if it's a waitress it's like oh I don't know I'll go right, ask yeah, the yeah. chef you know but yeah they're they're generally free okay. to share so it's not yeah. like kind of a, no, a secret recipe kind of thing? No, especially if it's just one item oh, like yeah. that. If I would yeah. ask for the recipe, I have a feeling that might be a problem. Right. But okay. it's like, what is this spice that I'm tasting then? Usually they say. They, yeah. yeah. No, that's great. Yeah. Anything else that, uh, that uh, you wanted no, to share there? Was, from? Those were the things that I thought about. Yeah, no, that, that's that's fascinating and uh, and makes sense to just from, from what I know of you that, um, that's, that those those things that you mentioned have, have shaped and have, yeah. uh, have brought you to this point. So really interesting to hear. Um, yeah. So you were, you were talking a little or a bit about, um, <laughs> about the blog. And, um, so was the, was this a dream of, of yours or something that, uh, that, um, yeah. How did you decide to start it and how did it begin? It was, a, it was actually a suggestion from my children. Um, it's not uncommon to have people message me or call me regarding oh, yeah. a recipe or a certain dish or a, the, a way to do something. I get that quite a bit. Okay. Yep. Um, and I had already compiled a cookbook and it seemed like the culinary world was increasingly moving towards food blogs and right. technology for recipes. Yep. And so my kids decided that it would be a good fit for me and I kind of liked the idea. Mm-hmm. Mostly it's been a good experience. I think my biggest frustration has been when WordPress decides to reformat their blog style. Okay. <laughs> and I'm scrambling to try and figure out the new format because I'm not really great at technology. Yeah. It's not my strongest That's, that's not the reason you're doing it. <laughs> no. It's like stick with the format that I learned and just let me do this, please. <laughs> <laughs> but my my daughter who is a techie will say oh but it's fun it's a lot easier you know once you get to know this new format and i'm like yeah right <laughs> <laughs> they're, like, they're gonna change it again as soon yeah, as, uh, yeah, you figure as, soon it as out. i've yeah. learned it then it'll change again yeah so do you um and we'll maybe talk about this um a little bit further on but um are you coming up with recipes for it or how do you decide what your next blog post is going to be and i start thinking goes? um kind of at the beginning of the month or even at the end of the month before I start thinking okay. of what foods are in season for that month. Yep. Obviously in the summer months and the fall months that plays into into my blogs a lot more yeah. because the, the, there are so many things that I could feature. Yeah. Um, so whereas, is, the, is the idea with it to promote <laughs> Yeah, it's, it started parties? it started yeah. when I worked at the retail store that we owned. Yeah. And it was sort of a continuation of market where people would ask, how do I use this in a recipe and right, this, yeah. this item? And so that's how the cookbook was born. 
yep. because of those questions. And I started giving them restaurant recipes. And I don't know if you remember, I would sometimes make these dishes yeah, oh, yeah. and bring them to market and great. hand out yeah. little samples for people and then hand out the recipe card with them. Okay, yeah. With it. <clears throat> and so this is, I would say this is a continuation yeah. of that, just trying to give people knowledge and information and tools to use the products that are available. Yeah. No, that uh, that makes a lot of sense. That's great. <laughs> And um, yeah, I'll have a few <coughs> few more questions for you a little bit later on on how that's uh, that's been going for you and how um, how uh, you come up with your posts and things like that. But yeah, I'm, uh, I have uh, some questions for you about um, how your food <laughs> preparation process and that kind of thing. So I'm My looking kitchen. forward to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so first question is, what's your favorite cooking tool tool or tools? Well, the first one didn't take any thought at all, and that is a good sharp knife set. Mm -hmm. I feel that it's extremely important to have a good quality knife yeah. set when you're cooking a lot and to make sure that it's sharp at all times. Yeah. <laughs> do you regularly sharpen yes, your knives? Yes, I do. And even when we go to cottages, I take my knife sharpener okay. along because the knives are sure to be dull. Yeah. The last one that we were at actually wasn't. They okay. Were, they weren't dull. <laughs> dull. It's one Very of the nice. first times that I had experienced <laughs> that. Yeah. And... Uh, couple of whisks in different sizes I find extremely helpful. I use them an, aw an awful lot. Okay. And a scraper, like a rubber spatula to scrape out dishes. Mm -hmm. And a heavy-duty frying pan and cookware are essential items. Too. Okay. What do you mean by a heavy-duty? Is, like, is it a certain material? Um, or? Well, I love my cast iron frying pan, yeah. but it doesn't have to be cast iron. Just a heavy bottom that you're not going to be scorching your things all the time. Oh, okay. It's, because a lot of, I don't know, a lot of the the more the fancier cooking is done kind of high and fast okay you might be searing it and then baking it and, and oh or yeah baking okay. it slowly after that but you don't want to burn it you just want to give it a good right good char you know so so yeah. does the the heavier material does that allow just a little bit more time to before that, the heat and it gets just, to it the distributes food? the heat oh, more I evenly see, yeah yeah because mm -hmm. yeah. yep. a few years ago we picked up a cast iron frying pan okay. and i've enjoyed it but yeah. i wasn't yeah I, I kind of i think i knew some of those things but yeah. i wouldn't have wouldn't have realized that, that that's a specific explanation yeah. for it, it, so it, makes it sense. gives a more even browning and yeah. and tends to not over like the, not to burn it as quickly as yeah. what a very thin bottom does so very that's good. important to me yeah any other tools that uh, you thought of or? those were the key ones I, w I mean there's tons of tools but yeah. those were the key ones <laughs> yeah very good um so <clears throat> obviously another big part of cooking and making good food is the ingredients that go into it so are there things that you look for that your ingredients need to be in order to prepare a good dish in a nutshell freshness and quality i would say those are the two number yeah. one ingredients that i look for um and i realize that's not always an option depending where you live or what your options are but that is what i generally yeah. look for do you think you, can you notice a uh, like right away if if a dish is made with um i not can fresh? Yeah. i can but i have a fairly fairly sensitive palate because okay. of my years of exposure to good dishes but not ever if you haven't been exposed to that then you usually won't pick it up either, okay right? yeah it's, it's like everything else you get used to what you're what you're eating or yeah. what you're doing right so is it just a little more potency or what? yeah yeah so for instance i remember years ago um at a meeting we were at a board meeting there was a comment made we were talking about parsley and the person who was looking for parsley parsley said that she can, she just can't the parsley in ontario just isn't as as potent as where she came from okay and uh then we we asked where she's getting her parsley from and she's and she said no frills and we're like okay it's already a week old by the time oh, you get it yeah. there you know yeah we, we recommended that she goes to market and buys it from a vendor there who either grew it in his own garden or got it from another right. grower and that was probably harvested the day before. Yeah. Things like that. So that's what, an yeah. instance where freshness yeah. makes a big difference yeah. there. So yeah. that would be just one case that comes to mind immediately in yeah. to that question. Yeah, very good. Um, I don't know if you had more to say on that, but I was also curious if, and this is thinking maybe of a specific, a specific ingredient but is there something that you've learned to use that that gives a dish a really nice flavor that maybe people aren't as familiar with or that you've um, maybe learned later on or something like that yeah I had to look through my kitchen for this one <laughs> I, I literally went around looking at my cupboards and my fridge and my pantry um, 
I don't know, but little known because it depends what I'm making. But one thing that I have a lot, a large stock of personally is various oils and balsamics. Okay. Yep. Um, mixing and matching those is a delight to me. Oh, neat. And yeah. it's not restricted to salads. It can be used in main dishes, sometimes even in desserts, like an espresso balsamic over ice cream is really good. Okay. Wow. Um, or an orange cake made with a citrus olive oil is really good. Okay. Things like that. Um, so for that, you'll mix like yeah. a citrus fruit with yeah. an olive oil? Yeah. Okay. So uh, in a meat marinade, for instance, yep. if it's fish, I might use a citrus olive oil with a, with a grapefruit balsamic or something like okay. that. You know, I, I like that. It's, it's a personal pleasure for me. Yeah. Um, in a pro, like a natural product or a produce sort of thing, shallots is something that I have introduced a lot of people okay. to. A lot of people aren't really familiar with shallots. What are they? It's, I describe it as half red onion and half garlic. Okay. So yep. if you want a mild garlic tone without the stronger garlic overtones that you would get with real garlic. And if you want a bit more bulk and you don't want to go to the work of mincing that you would do with garlic. Right. Yep. Just use a shallot and it's and chop it finely or, okay. or coarsely depending what you're doing like in a roasted vegetable. Yeah. Sheet pan, for instance, I would just wedge it or slice it or yeah. something, flick slices. So, is yeah. that something you can find in grocery stores? Yeah. Yes, you can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, I remember. I, I don't think I was familiar with them until selling them at market. Yeah. And I have, I mean, I haven't seen them much yeah. since then. So no, I love yeah. them. They really add a nice flavor to a roast beef, for instance, or okay. something like that. Yeah, yeah very good. Um, as far as the, the mixing, the, the oils and the balsamics, and um, as you were talking about there, do you do like experimenting with that or have you kind of figured out what yeah, works? And... I, I experiment, but it's like everything else. The more you do things, the more you have a natural yeah. eye or, or nose for figuring out what works together. Yeah. So sometimes it's a shot in the, dar in the dark, but other times it's like, well, I know these two flavors blend, so yeah. why wouldn't this one work with it, you know? So does that mean that you're, you don't usually have an experience now where you're like, whew, not doing that again, or does that still oh, yeah. happen sometimes? sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Or I might add too much, bal like balsamic oh, is yeah. a fairly intense flavor, so I might go too heavy on that yep. por portion of it yeah. in my mixing and matching. So, yeah. Or I might think next time I'd use more. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Um, so you've, made, you've mentioned that to you, um, you're asking when you're at restaurants and that kind of thing, but um, what's kind of your process in learning to cook new dishes? Is there... How would you describe that? Um, I read recipes, as I mentioned yeah. before. Um, I take note of recipes of interest then in, in my reading, and then I research them, mm -hmm. both online and in hard copies. I have an impressive or embarrassing, depending on your perspective, <laughs> amount of cookbooks. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, I'm part of a Facebook foodies group, okay. and I'm part of a sourdough Facebook group. Mm -hmm. So I've learned a lot from the people on those groups because everybody is, that's their passion. Yeah. You know? So you can learn a lot of things from people that have a like passion. Right. Yeah. To yours. Um, and then I try them out on people. I know some people never try a new recipe on strangers. Okay. I use guests often as guinea pigs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and is that because you become confident enough in your cooking or are you just willing to do that have you always yeah, been willing to do that i think part of it is confidence and just kind of a sense of whether it'll work or not if i'm really skep skeptical about a dish or something seems off to me about the recipe mm -hmm. and i'm like how can this work i probably won't okay but gotcha, if, it, yeah. if it's a recipe that i look at and it's like what can go wrong yeah I'll, i will do it yeah and i i'm guessing there's kind of different categories of of food Oh, yes. Like there's different like ethnic foods oh, yes. and that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, for um, sure. Do you, do you kind of stay within a, a certain um, category or do you try anything? I will try anything. Okay, yeah. If I like it, I will try anything. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I draw the line at things that I personally don't like or okay. or I might not be able to get the products for it without oh, having yeah. to go to a specialty ethnic food store somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it, would it, are there certain like... Do you have more experience in certain categories and types of food than you do in others? Um, like, are there th certain things that you'd be confident trying a new recipe and sharing it with um, a certain type of food that you'd be confident sharing it with with guests than mm -hmm. than a than another area of food? Or are you pretty confident in all the all um, the different types of? Not confident food? in all. Some of them are sort of build as you go sort of style. 
Yeah. Um, I would say I'm, I've only in the last five years or so really begun being confident in, in, in um, authentic Asian dishes, okay, yeah, rather than the Americanized versions right. of them. <laughs> yeah, same with Mexican. We have a lot of Americanized Mexican yeah. versions, but That's there's true. some authentic ones that, you know, are fun to work with. Okay, yeah, very good. I I love to work with. I like I love to plan a whole menu around an ethnic meal. Oh, In fact, yeah. it's been a dream of mine for years. Sometime maybe I'll implement it of doing a, a monthly food club where we go to different people's homes and, and the host makes a makes a meal planned around a different country oh yeah so it's like eating around the world in people's homes so that's sort of a dream of mine yeah that, um for that turkey in the hole for the last or for a number of years i did a, a dinner and for the last few i've given three options uh one of them was german okay yeah and another one was a more traditional type and another one was asian okay so that was the last one that i had done so and they interestingly chose the German one. So that was okay. that was really fun. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So this is something that you sold on the auction. Yeah, that, I that sold it as could... a silent auction item. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. That's a, that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you ever? So you learn to cook new dishes, but do you ever like come up with your own recipe and do something totally new that's that's um, not been made before, or how does that work? Yeah, quite often I do. Um, there's a saying in the culinary world that all recipes stem from four basic ones so there, oh, okay. there are really very few completely new recipes yeah. right so mostly my res my new recipes are taking something that i've read and tweaking it mm -hmm. adding this subtracting this or taking often i do this where i look at three or four different recipes that are kind of following what i'm thinking about this is much easier to do online than in hard copies okay where you google a certain word mm -hmm. and you get three or four recipes pertaining to that word and then you look at all of them and sort of I like this from this one I like this oh, from yeah. this one and then mix and match them yep. and then it becomes your own recipe so, yeah 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 very good um so will you like if you like it you'll kind of write it down and try it again or how do you well I rarely make a recipe entirely as written and my, oh, okay. my husband would say half jokingly that uh if he likes something, he'd better savor it because he probably won't ever get it again. <laughs> exactly that way. Which, it's a one-time event. Yeah, uh, which is something actually that the blog has been good for me because it's forced me to, when I'm doing that, tweaking recipes and making them my own, that I measure what I'm doing oh, yeah. and then write down and, re and record what I'm doing so that I have it for the blog. Yeah. So that's actually been a good thing for me. I actually have some of those recipes yeah. on the record, right? Because so. that's, I mean as an art it's it's an art but it also is something that you want to be able to communicate yes, or pass on to yeah. other people which is different than which, like doing a drawing yes, or something like exactly. that exactly yeah, yeah that's, i hadn't thought about yeah. that part of it before yeah. you kind of have to you kind of it's an art that you almost have to quantify or make scientific yep. in order and to that, pass on to someone else and that's what's tricky else. and i've heard a yeah. lot of ladies say that or people say that people ask them how you make how they made this and they're like i don't know i just threw this and this yeah. and this and so i can't really give a recipe yeah i can tell you what i threw in but I can't tell you mm -hmm. the amounts and it can, that can make or break a recipe. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And that's, that's something that as a very amateur cook myself, I struggle with sometimes in a recipe that's, that's in a cookbook or that I find, um, if it's not well-defined mm -hmm. for me, mm -hmm. then I'm like, well, what do I do here? Yeah, what, yeah. uh, like what's the next step? Yeah. Like, um, sometimes I think it's like, there's an assumption that something happens that the person that yep. wrote the recipe um, just it's just known <laughs> to them, and so it's someone that me that yep. doesn't have experience, it's tough to to recreate. Yeah, that. I use the instance of of one local cookbook where there's a recipe for a chiffon cake. So the ingredients are listed, and the instructions are simply mix as all chiffon cakes. Oh, That's no. it. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that works for people who are familiar with how chiffon cakes work, but it would not work for any of my daughters who has, have probably never made a chiffon cake in their life. <laughs> yeah, I don't actually know what a chiffon cake yeah. is. What it, like, exactly. Is it, is it it's, something I've eaten? It's or? actually coming back, interestingly. It's oh, okay. like foods go in cycles like everything else. Okay. I describe it as half angel food cake and half sponge cake. Oh, okay. So it's, it's a light fluffy cake, but a little more body than an angel food cake. Okay. Yeah. There you it's go. good. It's a yeah. too big. And, and you just make it like you would any chef. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Yeah, did you have any more to say on your own recipes or? Um, yeah, no. Often they sort of evolve as I go, like with the mixing mm-hmm. and matching. I'll be tasting and and looking for color and taste, and mm-hmm. it's like, oh, it needs something, so I'll dash in a splash of lemon juice or some more pepper or a certain spice mm-hmm. or whatever until it looks and tastes yeah. right. So are you yeah. tasting all throughout the? Not all throughout, but at certain points where yeah. I, where I'm trying to figure out where to go from here. Yeah, that that's more with cooking than with baking, typically. Okay, I yeah. would say, yeah. Yeah, that was something that I've watched the occasional cooking show, usually competition ones. Those are the ones that mm-hmm. that um, I enjoy, and that's that's something that that stood out to me from um, professional chefs talking about that the first skill in cooking is being able to taste well mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um which yeah what you've been bringing out like yep. in a, eating at a restaurant things like that and you'll see that they're they're constantly tasting right yeah, yeah yeah great um how important would you say the presentation or how the food looks is to food preparation presentation in my books is all important and i learned that from my dad interestingly okay He had a saying that when something like this, whatever enters my stomach, has to pass by my eyes first. Okay. Mm -hmm. He was, although he liked good food, as I mentioned before, he was a bit of a picky eater. He did not like foods just mashed together. He hated potlucks for that reason. Um, But he had, when he liked something, he he really knew that he liked it. Mm -hmm. And so for him presentation was was all important and i guess i learned that from him yep and then going to the to the restaurants i learned about plating that's culinary lingo for uh arranging food on plates Mm -hmm. how you do that yeah and the dishes that you use to serve it on okay making the dishes match the food that's why you have some long dishes for long narrow dishes for Ah, certain things round dishes for others so on color yep um paying attention to color and flavor and texture variants in the meal itself. Okay. So you don't want to have, for example, uh, I wouldn't serve corn with scalloped potatoes and Mennonite dressing and a cheesy chicken because they're all yellow. Okay. It would make a nasty looking plate. Got you. Yeah. So you think about when you're preparing a meal, even where people are serving themselves, you'll think yep. about what it's going to yes. look like on the yep, plate. For yeah. sure. Yep. And then texture variants. So you don't want... Uh, three things on your plate that all have kind of a soft texture or okay. three things that are all chunky and dry. And you're, when you're talking about texture, you're talking about how it feels in, in your mouth? Yeah, feels feels and looks. But okay, So yeah. I would not do roasted potatoes with uh, a dry pork chop okay. and then green beans because they're all sort of separate and dry. Oh, yeah. You might need saying, something yeah. that has a bit yeah. of a sauce just to soften the meal. Yeah. That sort of a thing. Okay. Yeah. And so, yeah, you're thinking about those things yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, no. So, do you do you like? Are you able to des- describe why that is? That that how we see a plate or feel it or smell it. How does that? Do you know how that aff- why that affects the taste? Well, I think all our senses are connected, right? Yeah. So if it's not appealing to the eye or to the nose, depending what it is. Yeah. Like some people are turned off by. Some food items that they have hardly tasted, they just don't like the smell of it, mm-hmm. right? So they're all connected. And so if it's not appealing to the eye, it probably, you might force it down. Mm-hmm. And it sometimes might surprise you, but it does have to get past your eyes first. Yeah. And so if it were on a buffet, for instance, yep. and it doesn't look appealing, you probably won't take it. Well, that if, makes sense. If there yeah. are other options. Yeah. Whereas if it's on your plate or at the table, your family table, you probably will because your mom is saying you have to try everything, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> my mom anyway. Yeah, sure. same with you. Got to try a little bit. I just uh, watched my daughter do that to her son yesterday. Yep. So you have to take one bite. <laughs> so do you think that, um, I don't know if this is even possible, but if you could have exactly the same tasting dish and one is plated and presented really well, and the other one would taste exactly the same if you were blindfolded, but what, no, no care was given to to that presentation. Mm-hmm. Do you think that the person eating it would think that the the nicely presented dish tastes better? Do you think it would actually like make a difference in in how now that would how be an interesting taste? study about the taste? I'm convinced that they would choose that one over the other right, one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because of the eye appeal, but yeah, I don't know about the taste, whether it can actually fool your taste buds. That, yeah, would, that would be I, an interesting study for somebody to do sometime. That would be the reason I... It could be. The yeah. mind can do 
funny things. Oh, I right? know. Very, I don't know if you remember this, this story or not, but um, I was, I think it was actually at a, at a family camping um, event. I think you know where I'm going I know, with this story. I, I thought of that. I didn't edit. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, we were eating, I think it was one of your, I don't remember if it was. It a, was a loaf of some sort. Yeah. Um, and it, it had a lot of good nuts and, yeah. and things in it. <laughs> and um, I, I was fairly young. I, I think I was, I don't know how, probably a young teenager around a little no, over 10 No, you were or younger than that. Was yeah, I? Okay, yeah. okay. That, that makes me feel I better. I would say between 8 and 10. Anyway, uh, your son Logan, what, he liked to tease me. And um, <laughs> somehow he got me convinced that this bread had peppers and onions and mushrooms in it. Olives. Olives, yeah. yeah. It was, it was full of things. The nuts were that, olives. Yeah. I, it's, some, somehow it was... Um, it was full of things that you normally wouldn't yeah. put into to bread. And so I totally believed him. I totally fell for this. And, um, but, but being raised the way I was, I had to, <laughs> I, had, had I, to took it. It, I had to eat it. And, um, so I was, I was working away at it and yeah, it was not good. And, um, and so I've got halfway through it and I'm like, oh, I, I can't eat it anymore. I can't handle these strange things in this loaf. And so I, I took it, I took it back to the table where I think Logan was sitting and you happen to be there as well. And I said, I, I can't eat this anymore. It's uh, I can't handle you don't the, like the, the olives, olives in and, it. And, and, and those things. And and he thought this was just hilarious. He told me it's nuts. I did too. And, I have to admit. Yeah, it's nuts and things like that. And the funny thing was that once I knew that, I just ate the rest of it. Oh, it I don't fine. remember yeah. that part. That, that was that, funny. That, that's the part that that uh, I look back on and just laugh. And the I, mind that, is a powerful yeah, tool. Really. As soon as I knew yep. what it was, I'm like, oh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's so, funny no i thought of that incident too because i got a kick out of it and and it showed me i remember thinking that you were because of your training you were yeah. going to try it anyway but depending on the child they wouldn't have right yeah they wouldn't have even given it a first that. shot yeah yeah <laughs> hey, and th that's sorry uh, to do that to you no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a great story to look back on but it, it's interesting the the approach that my parents took with me that um i was encouraged strongly to to try everything i don't know if i always had to i think uh, they got to a point where i had to eat everything that i took and i had to think about that but i always had to take at least a small portion of everything um i think that that has made me very open to trying new dishes and i'm so thankful for that now that um that i'm willing to try new yeah. things and and um i feel like i'm, I'm like, convinced that that exposure to different foods at a young age is is key to having them develop a, a fairly large umbrella of tastes yeah i remember serving my two-year-old i don't even remember which child it was at a friend's gathering and she was still in a high high chair and i just automatically put a bit of caesar salad on her on her tray okay yep. lettuce leaves and croutons and stuff and my friends looked in amazement and said you're feeding your two-year-old caesar salad <laughs> like does she eat it i said or he i don't remember if it was logan or not and I said, yeah, we give them everything we eat. Right. And they just automatically eat it because that's what we're eating. And yep. they're like, I would never have thought of giving my two-year-old okay. Caesar salad. Yeah. So I'm convinced that that broadens mm -hmm. the taste buds of a child. And yeah. if you start them that way right away, as soon as they're eating, then they will never know any different, right? Right, yeah. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And for the most part, I, I like the... The new dishes that I try, I'll occasionally run into something that that I don't care for, but um, yeah, same here. But um, for the most part, yeah, I, I enjoy trying new dishes and, and things like that. And there's no denying that some people are pickier eaters than others. It's like everything else; not everybody's the same, right? Yeah, but. yeah, for sure. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anything else that you wanted to say on food prep before we move on? No, I think that covers it. Awesome. All right. I thought it'd be interesting if uh, if you would. And it's up to you how in depth you want to go here. But if you would share a little bit about um, one or two of your favorite recipes um, that you would describe at least as best as we can here over audio. But um, yeah, what's uh, what's one of your favorite um, dishes that uh, recipes that, that you've made? This question is tricky because my tastes are ever evolving. I, I never I've never really had only one or two favorite recipes. I okay. was asking Steve, what would you say <laughs> my favorite recipes? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> so some of my current favorites would be sheet pan dinners. I kind of go through phases where I'm trying different things. So right now, sheet pan dinners where you drizzle olive oil and seasonings mm -hmm. and a carefully chosen balsamic vinegar over a variety of vegetables and meat and then roast them on an open sheet pan. Okay. Which is, it's easy. It's all, it's easy cleanup. 
um, and it tastes good because all the flavors, you know, oh, yeah. lend to each other. Mm -hmm. I like fixing gourmet grilled cheese sandwiches, okay. other hot sandwiches. Yeah, nice. This time of year, I like I get excited about trying new soups and stews and chilies. Okay. So yeah, it evolves it depending on the season and depending on my mood. Yeah, very good. Yeah. What uh, What are some of the the meats and vegetables that you like to use for the sheet pan? Dinner? Well, the key with that is either to use uh, meat that would cook at the same time as the vegetables oh, or yeah. sometimes I will add like I'll start with the carrots and potatoes first because they take longer to cook okay yeah then fish maybe if I'm okay. using fish is a very short cooking thing yeah um if I'm doing chicken breasts then they'll probably cook pretty much at the same temperature and okay. speed as the vegetables so you have so, to be a little careful yeah, depending you have on what to you're be, using you're careful yeah. but it, it works you just like I say you research and yeah. uh, find out but, yeah no, and, you, and some of that is learning with experience, just knowing that a hard, dense vegetable like carrots, which right. is one of the hardest, yep. will take longer to cook than something like zucchini, right? You know, yeah. that is watery and, and soft. So will you actually like add the zucchini a little yeah. bit later to it? Uh, okay, and that, red peppers, like idea. peppers the same way. I, I hate limp, mushy peppers. Uh, so yeah. if I want them a little bit crispier, I will add them just in the last 15 minutes instead okay, of the yeah. whole half hour. Yeah, well, that's, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, what are some of the things that you that you do to your grilled cheese to make them gourmet? Oh, well, uh, a good one, if I have it on hand, is, is ham, obviously, or different cheeses together. That's been fun. Oh, and yeah. again, some of that ha I've discovered in, reg in restaurants. I rarely order a grilled cheese, but I was always look at s and see what they have on it. Okay. And yeah. I remember one in Stratford that had three kinds of cheese, and one of them, interesting, was brie. Okay. And that was new to me. So it's like brie on a grilled cheese, you know, mixed yeah. with cheddar. And I forget what the third variety was, something sharper too. Okay. And so I did try it at home. I was okay. Like, this is good. Um, is that more of a mild cheese? Brie? Or? Yeah. It's soft and creamy and, and oh, typically okay, yeah. eaten with fruit. It has that waxy waxy um, layer outside. It's oh, often yeah, yeah. served. It's round. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, and I, I did a... I found this one online. It was a, oh, I forget what it was called, but it had guacamole on it. Okay, yeah. It was like a, a Mexican sort of mm -hmm. grilled cheese. That one was really good. Bacon. Yeah. I remember it had bacon. I think I, I've done guacamole in a yeah. grilled cheese yeah, before. I really delicious. like that. Yeah, delicious. Yeah. And yeah, roast beef even. Like if you use provolone in roast beef, that that's really good. Okay. Yeah, grilled cheese. Add yeah. some mustard. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Did you, uh, have you tried any new soups this, this fall yet or? Um, no, I'm looking at doing a white chicken chili shortly because I have the stuff I need for it and okay. I would like to do that. And I have jalapenos that I need to use. So sometimes that oh, di nice. dictates what I make. Yeah. Very um, good. Yeah. So. No, that's, uh, that's excellent. Um, you, you talked about, um, enjoying restaurant, um, meals and specialty restaurants and that kind of thing. Um, but I don't know if that's, uh, that's what you're going to talk about here, but, uh, do you remember, uh, is there a, a meal that stands out in your mind as, as one of the best ones that you've ever eaten? So again, because I'm not very ritualistic, I can't think of one best meal, but mm. I can think of my best lamb chops ever that turned me into a lamb lover for life. Okay. Had them in France. Okay. I can recall my best German meal where the schnitzel was done perfectly and the nice. spätzle was browned to a nice crisp, a nice crisp brownness and the braised red cabbage was the ultimate. In fact, that was the, the inspiration for the German meal that I offered on, okay. the, on the turkey and the whole silent auction then. And I tried to replicate that meal. Okay, very good. Uh, that was at Hessenland in, in Zurich, which is owned by... German in immigrants, so okay. it, it was authentic. Very, Very good. Nice, yeah. They're still operating. Okay. Um, I can remember one of the best ribeye steaks I ever had in a restaurant, and that was at our very own Bauer Kitchen in Bauer Kitchen in Kitchener. Okay. Um, and it was just done to perfection, or yeah. What, what's and and I think it had a peppercorn sauce on it, or something that was just amazing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was just one of the best ribeyes. I like ribeye yeah. is my favorite steak, and it okay. was one of the best I've had. Yeah, very nice. And I remember the best arugula and roasted beet and feta salad with fresh dill dressing <laughs> nice. that I ever had. And that inspired me to try that at home. Okay. Um, and at a at Richmond Station restaurant in Toronto. Okay. So. Very good. Yeah. No, um, Joy and I did uh, something that we, we don't um, 
eat out a whole lot and if we do we don't usually go to to very expensive yeah. restaurants but uh um we did that just this summer because we hadn't been in a restaurant for months and so we decided to we were celebrating our anniversary a little bit late but we decided to go to one in stratford mm -hmm. and um we we did the full experience like ordering a salad and a main course and a, mm -hmm. and a dessert and yeah it just it just blew me away how it's like an experience right? yeah it's an experience yeah. and just how the, the flavors yep. and the just how much the presentation and yep. and the flavors uh, went together and that was uh, I'd have to say I, I had a um, steak with a warm potato salad and uh, good. really good um, called an heirloom tomato yeah. salad. See, you're uh, remembering it. Yeah, I you know, it, it, <laughs> and it just I I enjoyed every bite. I ate yeah. it like as slowly as I could so that yep. I could I could savor every every bite and it was. Uh, it was excellent. So yeah, so and I'm not really recommending that, that you do that. You can't do that every week, right? Obviously, right. Yeah. But <laughs> even if you can do it once a year, or depending on your situation, once every two years, just yeah. do it occasionally, just to get the experience. Yeah. And, no. And I'd... to learn. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It, it broadens your your world, your mm -hmm. food world view. Yeah. No, that's for sure. Other places that are really good for for trying foods are different markets. So. I'm still going to try and replicate the Portuguese custard tart that I had at the St. Lawrence Food Market in Toronto. Okay. That food market there particularly is very ethnic. Okay. So yep. a lot of the vendor stalls feature their ethnic food. And I had we had been in Portugal and I had oh, okay. I didn't even know about their custard tar tarts and I never really saw them anywhere when we were in Portugal. But I saw it there and it's like, this is out of this world. I'm okay. going to have to try and make this, yeah. right? <laughs> Which I still haven't done, but it's still on my books. Yeah. That's excellent. Um, yeah, anything else that uh, that you wanted to talk about there as far as meals that you've prepared or eaten? No, oh, I think that covers it for now. Excellent. All right. So, uh, yeah, a few questions for you then um, going a little bit further into um, how you do your your um, your blog. So you talked about doing a blog approximately two a month. Is that kind of mm -hmm. what your goal is? Yeah. And um, is there a specific goal that you have for a blog post or, um, yeah, kind of what do you put into a, a blog post or try to accomplish every time? I think my key goal is to get people to try, try something that they might never have tried before okay. mm -hmm. or done and to stimulate meal ideas for people. So sometimes I post and I get responses later that, like, oh, thanks, that's my meal idea for tonight or tomorrow oh, night. Nice. I was wondering yeah. what to do. So that's one goal. And then another goal is to help novice cooks realize that cooking is not difficult, or at least it's only as difficult as you want it to be, yeah. mm -hmm. like any other art. And it can be a fun and practical way to serve those we love. Cooking, eating is something we all have to do. So yeah. by cooking, we are we are turning it into an act of love and service. And mm -hmm. it's it's my love language, definitely. It's not for everybody, but... It is a practical way to serve the people that we love. Yeah. And, and that falls into the, the family table sort of idea. That's why the table becomes this this uh, home home conversational grounds for anybody that yeah. enters your house just to, to chat. You know, the, the food sort of loosens everybody's tongues. Yeah. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Stimulates conversation and everybody relaxes while they're eating. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. So as, as far as trying to help out a novice cook, um, do you try to communicate in your recipes as clearly as you can? Or what are some yeah, of the ways you do that? That I'll talk about that later then oh, okay. in, Perfect. The, in the advice yeah. <laughs> section. Yeah. And um, are you trying to to do a variety of different types of recipes and, and yeah, ingredients? I, I, or try to, I try to feature different ingredients yep. and I try to try to not be focused too heavily on one one area try to cover the yeah the basis in food genres yeah that makes sense yeah. so do you do um one recipe per po post or yeah usually okay every now and then it's tied to you know maybe a little short addition that i might be using in that recipe okay. that yeah. i'll just add that as well like yeah. the pasty for instance the pie pastry included with the pie those are technically two different recipes. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, I would sense. include it or the filling for a cake or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Um, I know that uh, from working with you at market for a number of years, um, it goes back a few years now, I guess. And um, then just from, from talking about you, I know that you like to promote um, using local produce, local ingredients, um, that kind of thing. 
Um, so why do you think that's important, or why why is that a a part of of your blog and um, and what you like to promote? Well, the most obvious answer is that if local produ produce is not used and promoted, it also will not be grown. Right. Yeah. Because if you if you're not going to use it, why why would anybody bother selling it, growing it, and selling it? Yeah, for sure. So if you want it available, we need to use it. And like I said before, it is also fresher and hence tastier and better for you. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Um, so is is any of the reasons that you do it for like... Like there's the whole environmental part of, of that goes along with it, like getting your food from uh, not having it shipped far and anything like that. But No, I'm not big into that. And the... the Fact of the matter is, we all like a good variety of things on our grocery store shelves. For sure, yeah. I'm, fr I am actually from a time where I remember when kiwi was brand new in the grocery okay. stores. I remember when pineapple were not available all year. Yeah, things like that. And, and so it's not that you don't like to use those no, things. No, it's yeah. not that I won't use them. Yeah. I do like using local produce. I mean, I like to use and promote local produce, but I'm not averse to using yeah. other things. And I like having them at my disposal. So yeah, the carbon footprint is not huge in my yeah. No, that uh, criteria. That's interesting because that that's something that you often hear going along yeah. with that. And um, but <laughs> yeah, um, but there are other reasons for it too. Like, yeah, like you said, the the freshness, the um, supporting the local economy, yeah. and that kind of thing as well um, makes a lot of sense. Um, as far as as a blog, um, the you probably like to present p pictures of it. You said you like that in a cookbook as well. Um, so do you do that yourself or how do you, how does the photography side of it work? Yes, I do. Um, it definitely lengthens the preparation process, but it yeah. would if I had a photographer there too, because I would still have to pause oh, at steps. See, yeah. I've, I've done that for our cookbook, for instance, I would get uh, our Martin's photographer in right. to take the pictures and stuff. So the process would, was always paused for her while she came and did it and, and so I decided it would be just as easy to do my own. And I've been working at improving my photography skills for it. Okay. Yeah. Um, it has to be photographed in the best light. And that can be tricky because the best light is rarely in the evening when we are eating supper. Right. Yeah. So if I'm making a dinner dish, then sometimes I will make it, it ahead to a point that it almost looks done. Okay. But it's not. <laughs> take the pictures then and then put it back in the oven to okay. to finish cooking things like that yeah other times i will try and make it for our noon meal if we can which is easier too now that steve is retired oh, right. yeah and especially if tori's home too that i will make it for our noon meal where the light is good so, okay yeah so like just the the sun being a little higher in the sky yeah. gives you that yeah. yeah so you don't have a dark picture or something yeah one with long shadows in it or something that's great yeah. were you uh doing um foot or like were you into photography at all before starting the I've blog? I've always been interested yeah. in it, yeah. So, so it wasn't like of, you were starting from no, completely it's from been scratch, sort of an learning extension it. Yeah. Of an, another interest of mine. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. that's great. Um, but yeah, I'm sure it would yeah. <laughs> change the it's, entire it's process. It's fun setting and, it up. The food might get cold in the process. My family all kind of smirks at each other and rolls their eyes when I take one plate. This is how I do it usually for for the plate picture. Is I I pre I put one together on one special plate it has to be arranged just right it yep, takes yep. the best breast of chicken it takes the nicest yeah. vegetables or whatever puts it i put it on the plate make sure it's centered properly and drizzle properly and then i take a picture of it i used to do that after my family was seated but i've learned to do it before because <laughs> <laughs> they're like come on mom the food's getting cold <laughs> I thought maybe they've learned if they take the nicest looking one, yeah. then they might get the one yeah, that's that's no. a little cold or something. But yeah, no, it's great. Yeah, so um, with the blog, I'm sure you've um, had a chance to, or it's kind of opened up connections and things like that. Um, but was there anything unexpected that uh, you enjoy about having a food blog? Well, the experience has been a learning one for sure, mm -hmm. and it's had its share of surprises. Um, a recipe that I think will take off doesn't, Okay. really, and yeah. one that I have no idea will be a hit becomes one, like how to make popcorn. That one totally took me by surprise. Really? Okay. Very simple post, but I got huge amount of hits on it. Okay. And comments later, it's like, I use your recipe now to make popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. This feels yeah. good when that happens, and yeah. that was, that's been one of the fun surprises that I've had. Yeah. Um, something else I enjoy seeing and that I hadn't really known about, I guess, is 
in the stats section, I can see where in the world the blog has been right, opened. Yeah. Yep. That has been fun. Yeah, yeah I believe it. I had it. no idea that my blog would be over in Korea somewhere, you know, or yeah. Portugal or Ukraine or wherever, you know, that's been fun. Yeah, I believe it. I and always wonder how they got there. Like who, how did they find it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it could have just been Googling. I, yeah. Uh, but yeah, then again, how would they have known to, yeah, to Google exactly. something so like I that? Always, yeah, exactly. So I always wonder that, but it's been fun. Yeah. And the other thing is meeting people all over. I used to be known as, I mean, we'd go places and as a couple and people would be, oh, it's Apple Man. But now more and more people are like, oh, you're the one who has the food blog. Oh, you nice. know? Yeah. So I'm sort of making my own identity yeah. through this, which has been fun. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Maybe kind of along with that, um, what uh, do you, you, you mentioned you get comments on a post. Um, do you like follow up with them at all like do you connect back with people or do you just read them and kind of um... uh, i believe in engaging yeah um and so if somebody comments i will make a point of of doing a return comment nice yeah. um if somebody just likes it obviously i let it sit at that but yeah. no i i like the i like the interaction part of it and i feel personally i feel like that's part of a successful blog yeah yeah, or no, or social media period. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. is it's important to be engaging, and yeah. I've noticed that mo generally the most, the most well received posts and the ones that get the most re likes on any work or or any professional post are the ones where, where they actually oh, engage yeah. with the people that comment. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense, and that's one of the <clears throat> the things that that it adds the whole recipes food. Um, information going online versus being on a, in a cookbook is that you can have live engagement yes. on it. Like, yep. do you have, do you have people coming in with like suggestions for, for recipes or tweaks that they sometimes, did? Sometimes. Yep. Yeah. Sometimes they'll say what they did differently or yep. Yeah. And that's, uh, um, and that's fine because that's what I did too, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, Joy really likes that for, for online recipes is that she can read the recipe and then she can read comments, comments. and see yep. what people yep. thought of it. Did it work for them? And, yep. and so I, I'm that. a firm believer in reading comments because yeah. I feel that that's where, that's where a lot of the information really lies. Um, yeah. Whether it works or not and what, what works best. Yeah. No, that's, that's or great. if there's something missing in the recipe, sometimes there's a, a key ingredient missing and there'll be a, com a number of reviewers that say, oh, oh yeah. You mentioned this in the directions, oh. but it's not actually in the So you just made a mistake in writing yeah, out the yeah, ingredients. Yeah, that sort of a and thing. It can be or, caught. Yeah, or it might be wrong. The proportion might be mm -hmm. wrong, you know. And if you are looking at making the recipe before that's corrected, <laughs> yeah. you could be one that's, you know, you have a one and a quarter cup of flour in your thing instead of a quarter cup. <laughs> yeah, that, that would make a big thing. difference. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's great. I think one of my favorite things is when somebody tells me that they were scared of making a certain food but my instructions made it seem possible oh, yeah. and they were successful. That excites me every time I hear that. Yeah. That's then, I, great. then I feel like my blog was a success. Yeah. yeah. And that's really getting at the goal that, that you have for it, right? Is, yeah. is getting helping new people. Cooks. To, yeah. yeah. And that was, that was the key in my cookbook as well. Mm -hmm. And it, it just continues. Yeah. Yeah. No, oh, that's fantastic. So, um, yeah, for the last, uh, couple of questions here, um, I'd, like to hear if you have any advice for those that are looking to improve their cooking skills i think my top advice would be to keep trying mm -hmm. <laughs> don't yep. be afraid to try new products watch cooking shows like you said you do sometimes mm -hmm. read books talk to people who do a lot of it whatever works best for you yeah and but don't get discouraged every cook yeah. has their flops even the seasoned ones yeah trust me i've had my share <laughs> No artist has ever produced only masterpieces. Yeah, that's for sure. And um, and uh, yeah, like I like the biggest thing in all of that is just to do it right. Like you can't learn something without practicing it. And, no, and, and even if you and... do, even if you've done something a hundred times, does not guarantee that you won't make a mistake. I'll give you a, a yeah. short story to illustrate that. Years ago, I was teaching home ec, kitchen home ec, okay. at, at the school, local school, and. The last day of home ec for the season, you make donuts for the whole school. You remember this? Oh, yeah. And we were on the last batch of glazing donuts. Okay. And it was 3.15. School shuts out at 3.30. And we desperately wanted to get this last batch done. And we ran out of glaze. So oh. we very quickly <laughs> had to make another batch of glaze. And I had my bag of salt and I had my bag of sugar sitting beside 
the stove there and before right. that i had had the students doing it but because we we're in a rush i did it yep <laughs> and i mistakenly put whatever it was a cup and a half of salt in instead of a cup and a half of sugar okay <laughs> and reversed the salt and sugar amounts yep without realizing and i noticed it seemed gritty as i was stirring was stirring it the salt just never really dissolved okay. properly <laughs> and uh we glazed the donuts, and this last batch was mostly for the girls to take home. That oh, were part I see, of the yeah. cooking show or cooking home ec. I see. And uh, one girl took a bite because they were nice and warm and fresh. Took a bite and just ran over to the sink, spewed it out, and said, "Ooh, what is wrong with this? It tastes salty." And <laughs> I kind of swiped my finger over the glaze on one of the donuts and said, "Oh no, I used salt <laughs> instead of sugar." But it was a good lesson for the girls. And yeah. every now and then I still get f ribbing from one of the girls in the class <laughs> about the time I did that. Mm -hmm. But it was a good lesson for the girls that no matter how long you have been cooking and even making the same recipe. I've made that donut recipe, yeah. I don't know how many times, and that glazed recipe. But because of the pressure yep. and and the time the time frame, I, I messed up. And that happens, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> don't be don't take it as a failure, like a permanent failure when it happens. Just continue. Yeah. And um, that, uh, yeah, that's a that's a great story and <laughs> um, and one to learn from. So, yeah, it's great. Any advice that you have for those starting a food blog since you've been doing it three years, a little over three years? Now? It'll be four in March. Yeah. yeah. Um, be prepared for it to take time. It's like everything else. Yeah. It will probably take more time than what you figure. It would. I generally figure about four hours on average, which includes the time it make, make, takes to prepare the food and to photograph it and then to write about it. Okay. Yep. Um, write enough to be interesting, mm -hmm. but not so much that people are thinking, enough, just give me the recipe already. Oh, you know? yeah. Because sometimes yep. the, the monologue goes on so long yep. that you're just like, okay, just give me the recipe. Mm -hmm. Um. And add every detail of the process, like we talked about before. Yeah. Every detail, while it might be obvious to you as a, the person who's making it, and you've made it many times before, maybe it won't be to a new cook right. or someone who has never made this sort of thing before. So yeah, details are important. Yeah, exactly. Every detail, mm -hmm. and then figure out what your objective is. I just thought of that on the way over here. Um, is it money? Like in doing the blog, this is figure out what your objective is. Is it for money? Mm -hmm. Is it for fun mm -hmm. or is it for exposure in the food world, food world for whatever reason? I know some bl professional food bloggers right. wanted to become known. Yep. So that will, that will dictate um, how critical it is to you that you have, you know, thousands of followers right. or hundreds yep. of thousands or whether you prefer to be a more small scale and actually engage with yep. your followers. So, yeah. No, that's, yeah, that, that's Or whether you that's actually need words. the money in this, and so you have a lot of associate links, right? Right, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, no, those are great things to, to think about, and, and that extends to probably other projects or blogs yeah. outside of food blogging yep. and things like that. Yeah. Just, and, and be realistic with your objectives, too. If, yes, yeah. <laughs> if you're like me and uh, not a well-known person, you, yeah. you can't uh, expect to have a podcast get to... Uh, be big or anything yeah. like that so I've, and and yeah. it might change over time you know yeah you yeah, might start with exactly. one objective and it might change yeah or evolve no that's uh that's great um as you write it as you write up your um the blurb that goes along with with your recipe and that kind of thing are you telling stories or explaining how you came up with the originally my the plan recipe? was to tell a bit of a memorabilia sort of story something okay from my childhood and sometimes that fits in with the product yep um, I have to be careful that I'm not repeating the same story yeah. <laughs> with the same product, you know, sometimes, which is more of an issue now in the heading towards the fourth year than it was in the first oh, two, yeah. right? Yep. Um, but mostly, yeah, mostly it is in, I like to tell a bit of a personal story along with it. Okay. I try to do yeah. that. If I can't, then I try to do an interesting bit of information about maybe my first exposure to that product or my first experience with it or, yeah. or the product itself. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. And have you like found that perfect uh, balance of not too much, but just enough to, to get it interesting? I guess you'll have to ask my readers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I sort of have figured out how many words I, I, oh, want, yeah, that's I a want good to way use, to think which, about is, it. which yeah. is a good scale. Yeah. 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 That's great. No, thanks a lot for, uh, for, 
coming and uh, and sharing. I, I really enjoyed that, learning uh, lots of new things and um, and thinking about food. And um, I do a, a little bit of cooking now and then. So uh, it's it's uh, I yeah, it's one of those things that I've learned too that that doing it makes you just a little bit more comfortable yep. with it with yep. with just anything so and enhances um, your interest in it for sure when yeah. you when you taste other food then too yeah yeah exactly um so this past summer um joy was working and so i was um home with Seth. so i did more cooking than not all of it but i did more than i had mm -hmm. before and so just being forced to do it got me just a little bit more interested, a little bit more comfortable with it. So that's good. That was, yeah, it was a lot of fun to hear yeah. the, the different things that you think about and, and have learned. So thank I you so I much. Like, I like hearing when husbands and wives both do some of the cooking. So. Yeah. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you everyone for listening. And thank you, Rose, for sharing your knowledge with us. It was great to hear the stories that she shared, the experiences that she's had that's helped grow her love for food and um, has, has given her her skills, especially was intrigued by the fact that she reads cookbooks from cover to cover and that she will ask about dishes that she tries at restaurants and um, will always be looking to, to learn new things um, as she tries a new dish or, um, or, or prepares a, a new dish as well. So thank you, Rose, for sharing those things with us. If you want to find out more information about the show, you can check out the website, everydayexpertise.ca. I would love to have you connect with me. If uh, you want to send me an email, you can do that at contact at everydayexpertise.ca. That's all for now. Join me again next week to learn from the expertise of everyday people.